to unite through common dreads. The UN, a high-minded organization with high-minded ideals, of which we have certain expectations. What are we supposed to expect from you? We're supposed to be able to trust you to do what's right. We're supposed to be able to rest easy, knowing that the standards you set for us are standards you yourselves will adhere to. We're supposed to be able to trust that no matter how difficult the right choice or the right decision is, that's the decision you will make. We're supposed to be able to trust you that if you make rules about the freedom of expression, that you will do your best to uphold these rules too. We're supposed to be able to trust that if you make rules about freedom of and freedom from religion, you will stick to your own rules. We're supposed to be able to trust that if you make rules about human rights, you will do your best to enforce those rules. Unfortunately, this is not always possible for you, the UN. The latest Third Committee General Assembly vote was an excellent example of this. To those of you who don't know, this vote removed very specific language in a resolution condemning unjustified killings that protected GLBT people. This does not mean the UN supports the killing of GLBT people, of course. If we look at the second article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we see that Everyone's entitled to all rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration, without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other statutes. Furthermore, no distinction shall be made on the basis of the political, jurisdictional, or international status of the country or territory to which a person belongs, whether it be independent, trust, non-self-governing, or under any other limitation of sovereignty. So this vote is not a turning over of the high-minded ideals the UN based itself on, but it is symptomatic of a very worrying problem. That there are nations in the 21st century that still believe that it's okay to persecute, and in some cases put to death people based on their sexual preferences, that it's okay to persecute GLBT people. And that these nations sit as members of the UN General Assembly should be a cause of concern for all of us. It has been argued the amendment is nothing more than a change in language, a splitting of hairs, an issue of semantics. If this is the case, if it is such a good point, then we must ask ourselves why the African group and the members of the Organization of Islamic Conference push so hard for an amendment of the language if it does not matter. We believe that the omission of sexual orientation coming after its original inclusion is a clear indication of where certain countries stand on this issue and that the approval by committee vote of what is in effect a watered down resolution sends out the wrong message to the world. We are all more than aware of the past failings of the UN. Our protector failed us several times. Failed us in Rwanda in 1994. It failed us when it did condemn slavery in the Sudan. It failed us when it did not protect those displaced by a civil war in Angola. It failed the Buddhists of Afghanistan when the Taliban destroyed priceless and irreplaceable statues nearly 2,000 years old. Poor Buddha. It failed us every time someone was killed for being gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, which is a discrimination of a person and a denial of a person their body autonomy. So those are the problems. What are our solutions? Abolition of the UN is not an option. Imperfect as it is, it has done good in this world, and it has at times held itself up to its own high standard. When a system is broken, we should try to fix it first. The UN as it stands is imperfect. There are ways to try and fix this. The United Nations Parliamentary Assembly, for example, is a start. But that's only half the battle. An organization is only as good as its members. So the UN, a multinational organization, is only as good as those nations it is composed of. We need to change the hearts and minds on the ground. It's not enough for us to just cry foul on a vote that discriminates against gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transvestite people, though it certainly helps. It needs to be explained in no uncertain terms why discrimination of those who are GLBT simply because they are GLBT is wrong. 
there are those on the ground who are fighting this cause tirelessly, like Amnesty International. We should not forget these people. We do not pretend to have all the answers. We do not pretend to have even asked all of the right questions. But we on YouTube can do a few things. Only a few, maybe, but they're no less important for only being a few. We can point you in the right directions. And we can ask you to register your vocal objections to any and all discriminations of GLBT people simply on the grounds that they are GLBT. If we unite, we can do so much more collectively. And we've united to deliver a message. To any nation that believes that in this day and age, persecution of GLBT people is okay. You're violating human rights. You're violating human rights. You're violating human rights. You're violating human rights! You're violating human rights. 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 You are 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 violating a human right. You're violating human rights. 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 You are violating human rights. You're violating human rights. You are violating you're violating human rights. 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 You're violating. You're violating human rights.